you can see the breakers and phthalates coming. All right, so I'll try to mark it on some structure where it's not obscured by the veins, which is typically anterior to them. Then on the wire models, which are these circulatory trees, you can find good images from uh, online. Um, the best thing to do on an internet search for this is to put circulatory wire models and then you'll come up with photographs of these. A lot of wires sticking out in space. I will focus just on the extremities, not all these little branches up here, okay, um, or in here. And we have models, it's really tight up in here under the liver. So we have better areas that show those components as well. But on this one from the posterior view, don't grab the wires and turn the model that way. Hold on to the base here. You're welcome to put it on a chair so that you can see it better than three feet above your head. So here we have the first branch, which is the brachiocephalic trunk. Second branch of the arch, which is the, the common carotid on the left side and the third branch, which is the clavian on the left side. Bless you. The two common carotids go up the neck and supply the brain and the skull. So we have a couple of views of those on this skull model. You can see here is a common carotid artery. And it's going to divide to form external carotid. And here's the facial artery going along the side of the mandible where I had you palpate for a facial pulse. And these are all branches of that you would label, label superficial temporal. You can also see those on this head model. You can't see the carotid very easily because it's covered up by the muscle. But you can see facial artery here going towards the nose. And these branches up here would be superficial temporal. Now, as far as looking inside the skull, we have, remember, two components, a pair of internal carotid arteries and a pair of vertebral arteries. So the internal carotid arteries are going to go up into the skull, and you can see them coming through the carotid canal. And the vertebral arteries are passing up through the transverse foramina. And again, you can see those coming into the skull here as two paired vessels joining together to form the single basilar artery and the dividing to form a T ending as the posterior cerebral. And on most of these, this is the best one probably, you can see the internal carotid artery forming the middle cerebral and the pair of anterior cerebral that are passing through the longitudinal fissure. Now, to illustrate that, here's the medial surface of the brain, anterior cerebral artery, supplying the medial surface of the brain. Okay. The middle cerebral artery sends, sends branches through the lateral sulcus, and it's all of these vessels that you see on the lateral aspect of the brain and the frontal. So it's supplying frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe. Again, inside there would be anterior cerebral. Okay. So what two structures did I tell you in lecture were supplied by the posterior cerebral? Cerebellum and occipital lobe. So lab should be as much as, we, as associating the st structure supplied by the blood as it is just learning the names of those vessels, because that's the, what you're going to get tested on in both areas. All right, so, and then again, associate names, all right? Middle cerebral comes out the middle, anterior cerebral goes toward the front, posterior cerebral comes off the back. So use those terms. Then we follow the subclavian artery. under the clavicle and out into the lower upper extremity. So at this point, it's subclavian, where you see all these branches, axillary, and then it becomes brachial. On the wire model, if I want brachial artery, I'm going to tag it down here, so you're not wondering 
has it transitioned yet from axillary to brachial? Most medial bone is the ulna, so the most medial artery is the ulnar artery, and the lateral is the radial. Two arches, superficial and deep. That one has three. Ignore the middle one. In actuality, we have upper, we have hand models. Um, this one is probably the best. So on this model, here would be the ulna, here's the radius, this would be ulnar artery, radial artery, and you can see the superficial palmar arch and the deep palmar arch, and you can also see that a greater size vessel is forming the superficial palmar artery, which is the ulnar, and radial artery is the primary blood supply forming the deep. You can visualize that information that I covered in lectures. Also, on our muscle models, and they're out on the desk, here's the clavicle. So before the artery gets to the clavicle, it's the subclavian artery. Once it passes under the clavicle, it's axillary. And once it gets past the border of the teres major, it's brachial. So this makes logical sense. All right, so we've gone through all these terms multiple times. Coming down the little finger would be the ulnar artery, and coming down towards the thumb, again, the radial artery. Okay. Now on the thoracic aorta, on the wire models you can see this as well. Notice these pairs of vessels coming off the back of the thoracic aorta. What would those be? Going between the ribs, posterior intercostals. Okay? Not just intercostals, but posterior intercostals. You don't need to know the anterior intercostals for lecture. I talked about them for lab. I talked about them for lecture. You can see them coming off of the wire model. But for a complete name, the vessels coming off the aorta are, an, are posterior intercostals. So here's the internal thoracic artery I talked about in lecture. And these would be the anterior intercostals. They join to become the posterior. So those are joined together and become the same vessel. All right. Then we have the abdominal aorta. We have quite a few. We have the wire model. Things are kind of tight in there. So unless it's like the going out to the spleen, I don't usually tag structures there. On this chart here, you can actually see some of the organs. All right, so celiac trunk, gets three vessels, left gastric, splenic, hepatic. Left gastric is one of a few that you need to indicate whether it's left or right. Okay, because it's only the left gastric that comes out of off the celiac trunk. Over here is another um, chart that has organs associated with it. So superior mesenteric is going to the right side because it's going to the ascending colon and small intestine. Inferior mesentery is going to the left side. I uh, also pull this chart out, which we don't usually use until we get to the digestive system. So here's it's a weird diagram because things are kind of blown out different directions. But here is the stomach. Look at this really nice celiac trunk. So the left gastric artery, splenic, and hepatic. All right, on Monday we'll be talking about the portal vein, so it's a good one for that. And there's another diagram behind it. No, if you want me to, if you want, or, um, if you want to help me that, just kind of lift this up and over, because there's probably more thicker one in the back. Yeah. It's like that more images available on it. So you can see the abdominal, you can see the vessels like the good brachis and phallic trunk and branches off of the abdominal aorta. Adrenal um, arteries can be seen on the torsos, the middle adrenal going from the aorta to the um, adrenal glands. Renal arteries are often hard to see because they are covered in the front by renal veins. So they're there and you can see the kidneys, but they're kind of hard to tag, so I brought this model out and you can see the large renal veins. 
This does not have a middle adrenal artery on it, but it would be located here. The best location for the gonadal vessels are on that chart up there. You can, I'll show it to you in just a moment. And on this model, so here are two really thin vessels. And those are the gonadals, either testicular or ovarian. And over here on the chart, these really two thin ones right here. Before we move into the lower extremity, another good model for the upper uh, branches off of the aorta is this model of the stomach. So this would be the abdominal aorta. You look in here at the top, that celiac trunk. Remember, celiac trunk has three branches. So left gastric coming down the inside of the stomach it going way over to the left side and then going over to the right where the liver is is hepatic. Okay. Superior mesenteric comes out from under the stomach and over the small intestine. You can see that one on here as well. These happen to be the peridrenals without the kidneys. If you look straight ahead at the torso on the right, you see the diaphragm? See the parent vessels going up? To the white portion of the diaphragm, mm -hmm. those are the inferior phrenics. You can also see them on the left, but it's Much easier to see them on, the, on the, this model over here. But right here and here would be the inferior phrenics. Phrenic to diaphragm, inferior on the inferior aspects of the diaphragm. So don't just memorize, try to make, you know, they have a logical reason why they're, why they're named what they're named. All right, so um, the lumbar arteries can be seen on those torsos a little bit. Remember, they're just like the posterior intercostals coming off the back, but when we're in the abdominal aorta, they're called lumbars. So they're supplying the muscle of the back, and they actually go into the spinal cord as well. I had a case study when I was teaching upper division anatomy. I had a case study for my students where a gentleman had a thinning of the wall of his abdominal aorta. That's under a lot of pressure. And it ruptured. He actually drove himself to the hospital before he lost consciousness. But they had to tie it off and divert the blood flow to do so. And it, the surgery was long enough, but by the time they started the blood flow back into his lower extremities, the spinal cords of that, um, of that area had died because all those lumbar arteries had lost their blood supply and he was paralyzed um, for his lower limbs. But at least his life was saved. Okay, so now let's look at what happens to the aorta as it finishes, as it ends. And so you can see on the chart right here, the abdominal aorta ends, as I indicated in lecture, by forming right and left common iliacs. And if we have a common <coughs> iliac, we have internal and external, all right? So internal goes into the pelvis, and I told you you didn't have to know specific names for lab, but <coughs> recognize that pelvic organs are going to be supplied by branches of the internal iliac. So the lower portion of the rectum, we have the uterine artery. Uh, we they have the names for the organs that they go to. Then passing along the pelvic rim, we have the external iliac until it passes under the inguinal ligament. The inguinal ligament is a band of connective tissue that stretches from here to here. And it creates an opening. So when the femoral artery goes, when the external iliac artery goes under that and is now in the lower extremity, we call it the femoral artery. Femoral or femoral or femoral. I don't care which way you pronounce it. So that's right here. Okay, it's an, ex it's an area of palpation. So if someone is bleeding from their lower extremity in the bombing accident the other day, or uh, not accident, but the bombing terror, terror attack, putting pressure right there is a good place to stop hemorrhaging inferior to that location. So that area is called the femoral or femoral artery. 
and it eventually disappears by passing into the adductor magnus muscle. So it goes through that muscle, and when we see it on the back side again, it's called the popliteal, popliteal or popliteal artery. So you can see it on the chart. This is a posterior view, so you can see it appear. All right, along uh, right here. And until it ends uh, by dividing into two branches, that's the popliteal artery. And I've drawn it here showing posterior view as a dotted line. So as soon as we can see it in the back, until it divides, it's popliteal artery. It divides by forming an anterior tibial artery and a posterior tibial artery. Remember the tibial nerve? All right, posterior tibial artery travels with the tibial nerve down the deep surface of the back of the leg. So that would be all of this down here. Anterior tibial artery goes lateral. So it's this branch, small branch right here. It wraps around, and we see it in the front of the leg with the deep fibular nerve. So that's the anterior tibial artery. Well, we have three compartments in the leg, right? Anterior, posterior, and lateral. So the posterior tibial artery has a lateral branch called the fibular artery, or peroneal, if you like that word. So it supplies the lateral or fibular compartment. So again, femoral artery becomes popliteal. That ends by forming an anterior branch called the anterior tibial and a posterior branch called the posterior tibial. And then the posterior tibial has a lateral branch called the fibula. The fibula, fibula is our lateral bone. All right, back to the anterior tibial. It comes down the front of the leg deep to the um, excentrihalis longus and then comes onto the top of the foot. We said the top of the foot was what relationship to the bottom of the foot? Dorsal. So that artery is known as the dorsalis pedis. You can see it. We don't have any leg models that show it, but you can see it right here, running along the top of the foot as dorsalis pedis. Okay? Hence, that's what I have here. It's a good place to check for a pulse. If you've got a cast on and you want to make sure you don't lose your leg as you put the cast on. Tight. Then it arches across the, the base of your toes, and that's the arcuate artery. So that's anterior tibial to dorsalis pedis to arcuate artery. Posterior tibial follows the nerves and passes behind the medial malleolus onto the bottom of the foot. Now, there's no arteries on the bottom of this foot, okay? But what it does is it divides and supplies the two sides of the foot. So it goes straight to the big toe, and that is the medial lateral. It angles over to the little toe, and that medial lateral, medial plantar. It angles over to the little toe, and that is the lateral plantar, okay? So in line with the big toe is medial plantar, and arching over to little toe is lateral plantar. None of, our, none of our models show this, but on this chart, the artist illustrated it by putting this foot up on a block and pretending there was a mirror below that. So here's the big toe. And this vessel right here is medial plantar. And this vessel angling over is lateral plantar. Now, that's the end of the vessel. On Monday, we're doing the veins. <coughs> Spend as much time as you can nailing down this information because about 85 to 90% of the veins travel with the arteries that we just talked about and share their name. So with the femoral artery, we have the femoral vein. With the ulnar artery, we have the ulnar vein. With the splenic artery, we have the splenic vein. Okay. There are some changes. With the carotids, we don't have carotid veins. We have jugular. So there's a few changes, and there's some superficial veins. But if you can nail down the arteries as much as possible, the veins we cover on Monday will be familiar to you, and hopefully, 
Almost learned. 